Hello, Facebook. I'm just getting ready. And here we go. I am working on it. All right, guys. Everybody with me? I hope so. All right. I hope everybody is there. And we are online. Hello, Ruby and Lucy. Hello, Shannon. We are working on our little baby chicks today. I'm so excited. I like baby chicks. They're one of my favorite things to paint. They're just so round and fluffy and cute. And you know what? While people are coming in, why don't we tell people where we are from? So in the comments, why don't we say... Uh, type in what city you're from or what state you're from. I know I have a little bit of everybody on here, or I'm supposed to be. Of course, I'm a little early. Um, if you can hear me, let's... Hi, Desiree. I'm glad you got... You figured it out. That's good. And... I am gonna make a little baby chick today. We're just waiting for people to come in and tell me where you're from. We've got a Gallatin and we have a campground, Hornsby Hollow Campground. Oh, Pennsylvania. Hello, Beverly. You're Desiree's aunt, I heard. And, um, I'm excited that you're here, for sure. Are we ready to celebrate Easter? Yes. I want you to know I'm ready to celebrate Easter. Easter's one of my favorite times because you get to have, I always got to have a new dress. You got a little bit of a candy. My mother was really good at, um, Easter baskets. I loved Easter baskets. All right. And Vanessa, hey, how are you? Okay, guys, so I'm going to just go ahead and start here with my normal spill while people are coming in. I know a lot of people wanted to do my little chicks, so um, maybe a lot of more people will come in or not. Um, I would love to hear where you're from if you haven't put that in yet. So, I'm Megan. I do this every day at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time. And today we are doing this chick. It's a watercolor class. And then tomorrow we're doing the Easter Bunny. Maybe a little bit of Peter Cottontail. That's what we're going for. And so I do this Monday through Thursday at 2 o'clock Central Time. Okay, so what supplies do you need? So I like to use watercolor paper. You don't need to use watercolor paper. Hi, Barb. Yeah, another Gallatin. Let's go Gallatin. Okay, so watercolor paper is very hard paper. You don't have to use it, but it's pretty hard. Y'all hear that? It's called 140 pound paper. And 140 pound paper just means that it's hard paper. And it holds up really well with water. So what I like to do is I like to take my piece of paper and I like to cut it in half. Okay, and so I cut this in half, and this is what my original project is, just to save my paper. And then I divide this paper down for my exercises for our practice. Okay, and so it looks like this, little baby, like that. So that's how I save my watercolor paper, and I don't waste it on things. So that's my watercolor paper. I also, I'm going to put this back Let's so everyone gets to see that that's what we're making. You need some watercolors. This is just a simple little watercolor palette. This is in pans. Uh, that's what this is called, a watercolor pan. 
and it has little pots of little of watercolors and so you don't need to have a real expensive one you could have um, a little cheapo one that's Crayola even it works just as well um, and so this is my favorite an Angora that's one of my favorites they're my favorite brand of in pan okay you need a little paintbrush now I, today we're going to do some hair because little chicks are little fuzzballs, right? So I'm going to try to make this whole thing with this paintbrush. And you'll see it is probably, it's called a quarter inch mop. It's really soft. Uh, it's been through a lot, as you can tell. It's not very expensive, but it's been used quite a bit. Um, I also really like this little small one. This is called a Simply Simmons. That's the brand, and it's a number two. And it's pretty thin. I'm going to show you that. Yeah, I know on Instagram it's hard to tell. There you go. But it's called a round, and it's a number two, Simply Simmons. And this is a really good one to do hair with, too, but I probably won't use it. So you will need a pencil. And beware of your pencil and your eraser. Uh, if your eraser is hard, then chances are it will not erase anymore. So just know that coming in, okay? And... Um, use a different kind of eraser for sure. I like to use a pen at the very end of my work. This is called a Uniball Signo. Y'all see that? And it's a 207 bold. Now what I like about this is when it dries, it doesn't bleed and it's permanent once it dries. So this is one of my favorite. I buy them in bulk. I buy the regular ones to write with, and then I write the bold ones to do my art with. Okay, you'll need a paper towel, and that is what we are going to do. So, for people that are still just joining, I see I've got some more numbers in here. We are going to do this little chicky today, and then we're going to do a uh, bunny rabbit tomorrow. I also wanted to show you all, I have a class starting on Monday, it's a paid class, and it is this hydrangea, and it is a watercolor class. It's a Zoom class, and it's Monday and Tuesday. It's at noon, so if you're interested, direct message me, and I'll give you the link directly to pay for that, and then I'll give you all the information, but it's $25, and we'll be making this. You want to already have supplies handy, probably, and you want to have at least taken one of my little classes like this in order to use it. So, um, just so you know, that's an, also an offering. I'll talk about that maybe at the end of class, too. Okay, we ready to start? Anybody got any questions real quick while I'm sitting here? So, in order to start, I am going to put, I'm going to put a little chicky up here in the corner. Everybody can see my little piece of paper. We are going to practice making hair today. Hair, hair, hair. Now, remember what we do first is we have to activate our watercolors. So in order to activate our watercolors, the big thing that we do is we either have a spray bottle with just water on it and we spray it or you take your water, um, I'll pull, pull my water in here, and you put your water on it, and then you dip it on your color, and then you put it on your paper towel. I'm trying to get it so you all can see. Okay, the reason we do it on the paper towel is we want to keep our water clean. Okay, so we go back and forth. We come in, we dip it into the paint, we put it on the paper towel, and then we put it in our water. And we do that for every color. It makes your paper towel really pretty. Did y'all notice I finally got a new paper towel? I'd had enough. I couldn't do it anymore. That thing had been probably, it was a month old. Yeah, I like to recycle, what can I say? I don't really recycle anything else but paper towels. <laughs> I do like paper a whole lot better than anything else. Okay, 
So I'm gonna, you go ahead and you do that for all of them. This activates it so it's ready to work and actually do it. I'm gonna take it offline here, yep. Okay, we're gonna draw hair today. I'm trying to get you so you can see it. So for the sake of argument, I think I'm gonna just use a gold color or a yellow color for the moment. And I'm going to just get some paint brush, some paint on my brush. And I'm going to make, let's make a circle. So I'm making a circle. Nothing really special there. Let's turn that light off. Ah, oh, you can see better now, can't you? Okay, let's work on making little, it's a real, light so you're getting in there y'all see that both of you see that yep you get in there and you take it and it's a very light and you want to see I'm dragging it see that one wasn't a very good one it's a real quick wee 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 all right and it's taking it from it you notice the harder I go down the thicker my little hair goes that's what we're working on we're trying to see how thin we can get these little spikes okay so I'm gonna do my whole little thing that way I want big ones small ones I want us to really work on little spikes I'm gonna do a blue one just for because I wanted to do a blue one so I'm gonna do a blue one right here now this one seems to have more water on it Let's see what it does if it has more water. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to go. And let's see how long versus how short. What if we did long, short, long, short, long. See, it's harder when you actually think about it. Like I'm having to think really hard about this. Actually, it's kind of hard to talk and do this at the same time. Because it all has to do with how far you put down your, and you see if you go back over it, it even gets thicker, right? So we're doing splotches. This is a very, very good practice, splotches. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to go with pink next. This time I'm going to go with a real tiny one. Okay. And I'm going to come in and do, and I am working off of this big brush, and I'm trying to see how small I can make these. This is helping us learn how to control our brush. It's also teaching us how to control how much water we have on our brush. Now, he's a cutie, and I still have paint on my brush. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay. In the corner and I'm gonna try doing it over here now this one now it might be better if you rotate your canvas as you go along you all see how the direction of my thing of my little spikes you can tell it like this one I was trying to do it like this and this one got a little cat cattywampus right well that's because the angle, your wrist is used to a certain angle and you're trying to make it in a different one. So the best option I have to fix that is to rotate your paper. So if you rotate your paper as you go, you don't have to move your wrist, but you have to be careful. Oh, see, I don't want to get into that. And now... I'm going the opposite way. I don't know if I like that at all. Y'all like that? I don't know. I think that's a little hard. That might be harder. So, the point is, is for us to learn how to do these things. I'm going to do another blue one. Yeah. And I'm going to do little. Now, I have more water on this blue. And this takes practice. You see, these are a little thicker. And the reason they're thicker is because 
I have a whole lot more water on my brush. Now I'm trying not to get these close to each other as in like I don't want these to bleed on top of each other. So I'm just coming in and I'm practicing my little starburst. Ooh, starburst. Ooh, maybe somebody will get me starburst in my um, Easter basket. Ooh, that'd be great. Maybe the Easter Bunny will bring me Starburst. I haven't had Starburst in forever. I only like the pink ones, though, you know? So, I'm actually coming back in here, and I, because I can't help myself, and I'm darkening the center sunburst that I have, because I just can't help myself. But, you see when I'm adding that little layer back into it, how it brightens that up? Remember... These watercolor is nothing but layers and the best way to do it is that you do one layer and you let it dry and then you come in and you do another layer on top of it. You wait for it to dry and then you do another layer and that's the beauty of watercolor because then you get these really cool fun little um fun little um I don't know what can I say puddles Okay, have we drawn enough starbursts? I think we have. Let's draw our chicky, 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 chicky. Okay. Anybody got any questions about our starburst? Boy, my paper towel is so pretty right now. Okay, I don't see any. Of course, I know there's a little lag, but there you go. So that's what we are working on today. Those little starbursts are going to be called our little hair. Okay, so here is our little chicky. And I want us to look at this before we paint it or draw it. Okay? I want you to look at the shape of a chick before we start to draw it. And I also want to say you want to draw as light as possible. Okay? And I don't know if you can see mine. I'm going to bring it up close. You can tell where I have my marks, okay? And here's the thing, some people might like that and then some people may not like that. It's, it. you can, once it dries, come in here and try to take it out, but most of all, you see how I've got the yellow on my eraser here? This is called a kneaded eraser. So what I'm telling you is, is because it's water, and it's watercolor. It doesn't stick very well. So it will come out off when you actually do it. So you want to have this drawn as light as possible so you don't have to erase. Okay? All right. Let's look at this. The, a chick is two basic shapes. A circle and another circle. What do you know about that? And then a little triangle. Here's, and then you connect them. It's very, very simple, and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take that and put that up there at the top. I'm going to get my piece of paper out. The first thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to draw a horizontal line. Okay, so I'm drawing a horizontal line. Can you all see that? Yes? Okay, so I then am going to draw two circles. I'm going to draw a small one and a big one. I think I'm going to draw the big one first. So it's going to be close. Y'all see how I'm, did you see how it's practicing that with my finger first? I practice with my finger and you know what else? My whole arm is not on the piece of paper like this. I'm moving from my shoulder. It's one big loop. And I do it several times because some chances are one of those lines I'm going to like, maybe, right? Then I'm going to come over here and do another little circle. Okay. Now, you know what? I want them to touch each other. I don't want them that far away. So you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to make my bigger one bigger. Now, if yours are touching, don't bother. But I want 
this bigger. So you see how I just made that? Just made it a little bit bigger. Now, I'm already confused, so I'm gonna erase just a little bit to help you all out, because I know if I get confused, you all will probably get confused. And you see how it's not a perfect circle when I get down to it. All right, that's looking pretty good. There's my two circles. I want a big one and a small one. Notice I did not say a big one and a medium one. It's small, little heads. All right, now we have to connect our chicken. We got to make oh, the body of it. So the way we do that is we make two more circles. Y'all see that? Y'all see that on Facebook? I connected the two circles with these two C's, half C's. Okay? Now, what I'm also going to do is half of this circle right here of the head, I'm going to draw a little line on it. That's telling me right there where my eye's going to go. I want it in the half. Okay? It's also going to help me figure out where I'm going to put my little beak. Because those beaks are really important, right? Like little chickies have those tiny little beaks. Alright. You with me? Maybe? So I'm about to draw a little triangle right next to that. And it's right in the middle of that line there. Now, I don't know if you all notice, but my line right here is curved. The reason is, is because anytime you do something round, you should curve anything you put in the middle of it because, well, it stretches over something, right? That helps make it have shape. All right. I think this little chick needs legs. Who wants some little chicken legs? <laughs> little chicken legs. Little chicken little. Okay, so I am going to come down here and I am simply going to make an L. All right. That is looking great. Okay. Now it's time for some little details. Are we all with me? Let's check on that first. So I have, I'm going to review. I have a big circle and a little circle, small circle. Then I connected the two circles with half C's. Okay. Then I went in and I actually went in and I did a half line in that head. That helps me figure out where I want my actual little eye to go and my beak. I put my beak in the middle of this line. All right. Now it's time for our eyeballs. So our eyeballs need... To, now, a lot of chickens have little beady eyes. So I put a little eye, a little circle right there. I put it on top of that middle line, but it's really close to it. And it's really close to also my beak. Okay. Now, chicken beaks have this weird little, it doesn't, it's not flat like this when it connects to the actual chicken or the chick. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in. I'm going to draw this little, y'all see that? I'm going to let you all see this. So, I did a downward and this M shape right here. And also, I made, like, you know, a beak has to be able to open. It has to get its mouth open to eat all of that chicken feed, right? Okay. Now, 
I'm going to come in. I got to make the head looks a little funny to me. All right. So one of the things that a chicken does is that it actually, the head gets kind of, so this circle was our guide. That's why I wanted you to make sure that it was light because we're going to actually make it a little bit more round. Do you see how when I did that, I don't like that part right there, so I'm going to erase it just a little bit. So I'm going to make this a little darker so y'all can see what I just did. Y'all see how I connected that right there. So I shaped it a little bit. And while I'm at it, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase some of the inside of this head. All right. Now, I want y'all to know, if you were in a normal class live with me, I probably wouldn't let you erase anything. So feel privileged that you're at home and I can't see y'all erase all the time. <laughs> okay. So now we got to add a little bit of uh, details. A little baby chick always has a little baby wing, right? So we've got to put our little baby wing in. Our baby wing is in the middle of this big circle here, the body. And it's a, like a little, it's another little circle basically. So what I want is, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to ghost it. I'm taking my finger, doing a little... Oh, yeah, I can see where I want that. That works. So I'm going to come in here. And y'all see I'm sketching it out really lightly. Uh-huh. He's looking pretty cute. Okay. And now I need to, con I need to like, make his body just a little bit better. So this is the time where you're going to add a little bit of hair with your pencil. You're not going to go crazy. So I'm just kind of making a little line here I'm kind of adding some scribbles all the way down I'm connecting this the belly and this chest part you see when I did that we actually aha uh -huh, that's looking good I'm gonna add a little bit right there I may add a little bit up here on his head. And I'm making little scribbles. Now, I really got into the zone there. I know I didn't even really tell you how I was doing that. So I'm going to zoom in there, see if you can't see that, what I did. Now, this the next section is this little chicken foot, chicken legs. Let me tell you, chicken legs have never been a strong suit for me. They are not, they're kind of ugly, right? Like, ugh. Anyway, so we're going to work on it, and we have to make two of them, okay? One of them is going to be in the front of the other one, all right? So we're going to draw the front one first. This is the basic shape. It's an L shape. But remember, chicken legs have these three little claw-like things, right? Like that. So... We don't have to draw everything. That's something else in drawing, right? You can draw only a little bit of it. So I'm going to make this chicken leg. Think of this L as like the skeleton. All right, we're going to put skin around it. So chicken legs are really small. So I've got skin on both sides. Then I'm going to take this side and I'm making a, it's kind of a, claw-like thing. I'm going to make another one right beside it. And then there's always this little one that's right there. Now, I'm going to erase a little bit of this so you can see. Because one's in front of the other. So that is one chicken foot. When you go to paint this, trust me, no one's going to be looking at its feet. Nobody. So that's the first one. Now we're going to draw the second one right next to it. Okay? Okay, so 
This one is going to be a little bit on top of this one. So if I had to draw that L shape just again, like the skeleton of it, here is the skeleton one. All right? So I'm going to add some skin to it. I'm adding my claw and this one it gets real confusing that's what I'm saying when you go to paint this no one cares so you just need to make it look like you got two feet down there that's important just make it look like you have two feet all right I am liking our chicken legs and I think we are ready to start painting Anybody ready to start painting? Anybody got any questions before I start painting? So I'm going to show you what I've got here. Now, here's the thing. You see how this one doesn't have as much oomph as this one does? It doesn't matter, though. It doesn't. Okay. So, guess what? Chickens are only pretty much two colors or little baby chicks. We're not going to do brown ones. I know they're kind of cute, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do little pink, yellow ones. All right. So, and I'll be honest with you. I have, I'm going to see if you can't see this whole thing here. No, nope, can't get both on anything. But I have this gold color. Y'all see that gold color? Yep. Yeah there and there that's one of my favorite colors but we won't use that until the very end and that's only if I have it okay so it's okay I'm gonna mainly stay down here with my yellow and orange yellow and orange yellow and orange for the most part okay so just know you got to have that now what if you don't have an orange do you all know how to make orange it's going to be yellow and red. Now, how do you make colors with your watercolors? Do y'all remember that? Let's review real quick because I feel like we have some people who might not know. So I put some water on my brush and get some red. And I'm going to put it over here on my top palette. I, this whole palette was really, really dirty. And I, all I did was took a um, paper towel and wiped it off with some water. And literally, that's how I got it clean. That's how you start over. Okay, so I have some red right there. I'm going to wipe off my brush on my paper towel. Everybody see that? Go get some more water. And now I'm going to go into some yellow. Okay, I'm going to put it right in this red. Ah, I'm making some orange. It's getting pretty close. The way to test it is to always have, maybe, maybe it's even on your paper towel. And you come over and you see, oh, is that orange enough? Is it, does it need more? I think it needs just a little bit more yellow. So, all right. We probably will end up using this, so don't feel like you're wasting your time here. So that might have been too yellow, but hey. Ah, that's a better orange. I like that. So I leave that right where it is if I don't have orange. Okay? So here we go. Are we ready? First thing that I'm going to do, well, before I start this, if there's any lines on this that you don't want, now is the time to erase. Okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and erase that little spot right there. I'm going to erase maybe the skeleton part in this little foot. That's all I'm going to do. Okay. Looking good. Okay. So far, so good. We are running right on time. Now, I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a whole lot of water on my brush. And I'm going to go into my yellow. And I am going to paint the whole thing yellow. Okay. So I'm coming in. And I'm painting the whole thing yellow. I'm not painting th things I'm not painting right now. I'm not painting the beak. I'm not painting the eye. 
I am having to go back and get some more water, okay? All right, I am liking that right there. We have a yellow chick. Y'all see the little chick? It's so cute, it's so cute. Okay, so we're gonna work our way through layers, okay? So that's the first layer. We've done one layer. So now we're gonna go to orange, which is going to be the feet and the beak. So I'm gonna wipe off my brush on my paper towel, come over here. Now, this is little, right? These are little things. So you don't want a lot of water on your brush. You want just a little bit, just enough. And then I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna do my feet first. Now this is very controlled. You won't get it perfect because it's so little. It doesn't matter. Just has to look like maybe there's feet down there. Maybe. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna get into that beak. Okay. That looks good. Okay, I'm wiping off my brush. Now, only do this next step if you're around the eye is kind of dry. If it's got a whole bunch of water on it, I want you to not do this step. But I'm putting my thumb right on it. It's pretty dry for me. Like, I didn't get anything on it. It feels pretty good. I didn't have a whole lot of water on my brush when I did that part. So, I'm going to take just a tiny bit of water and I'm taking it into my black. You don't want this wet. If this is wet, do not do this because it will bleed all over and now you'll have a black chicken. We don't want a black chicken. And I do just one little dot right there in the center to make it his eyes. Okay, now, some of you might have more water than me, right? So we are gonna continue and we are gonna work on the bottom and the background next. And I'm going to say to you, I want us to try to not have a lot of water on our brush at the same time. This is a big lesson in controlling water, right? So I'm going to make some dirt down here because, you know, chickens like dirt or they're in dirt. So I got some brown I'm just going to go for. I don't have a lot of water on my brush. I'm not really caring what it looks like. And I'm just putting it down here. I'm actually even going above my little line because my little one foot didn't, he didn't, he wasn't on my horizontal line. So that's one layer. I'm leaving it be. Everybody with me? Say, so, yeah, I'm with you. If maybe there's a little chicken song. I don't know a little chicken song. Maybe we should do a little chicken dance too. Okay, we're going to do the um background next. This is the key. What did I This what's the method today? What's the key? What is the one thing that I've been talking about and preaching about? Not a lot of water. So I have a lot I have I've wiped my most of my water out of my brush. I'm coming over here to my blue and I'm going to do this. Now, that was a lot of pigment, a lot of paint with not a lot of water. I want us to make sure that we don't touch our chicken. Be very, very careful. Now, I've done that, so I'm going to blend this a little bit. I went and I got some more water. And that's how I'm going to move the rest of this paint. But it's not like I've got a whole lot, okay, so of water on my brush. And you see how it's messy. I'm not painting it perfect. There's two reasons for that. I had to go back and get some more water or more paint. One, it makes it interesting. Two, you, you need to loosen up. How many people say that you're just too serious? Don't be serious. Art's not serious. Well, it can be, but we're doing this for fun, right? We're locked up in the house, and we want to learn something new. So we are not going to be serious. We are going to have fun. Okay. 
I've gotten pretty close to my chicken, but not completely. I don't want it too wet. And that is what I've done. Now, I'm wiping off my brush, making sure that there's no blue in it. So I put it in the water. I put it on my paper towel. I'm really making sure there's no more blue on it. We're going back to our chicken. Second layer. Second layer. Second layer. Okay? So, we're going to do it with yellow again. So, I have... A little bit of water I'm getting a little bit of yellow and then you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the edges only the edges okay I'm making it's kind of I'm gonna do a little bit around that little wing just doing the edges okay And that's all, folks. I might, you know what I might do? I might come in here, make a little bit yellow circle around his eye. But be careful. Be careful. Okay. Now, don't work too hard on that blue, Desiree. Just get it down there. We're just doing... It's not the most important part, right? It's the chicken. Now, you might have a bigger canvas than me, too. That might have something to do with it. But I don't want us to spend a whole lot of time on that background. You can always go back to the background. The key is, is that if the bird is dry, then we go back for it. What's my second layer of my legs? It's going to be orange. I might do the orange that we made just because coming in or maybe not I want to just do my orange here I don't have a lot of paint or water on my brush you see how it just looks like an orange blob right there that's perfect you can fix that when you get to the drawing part of it I'm going to get my little beak here I'm only trying to do the edges, so I'm actually leaving a little bit of the beak with nothing in it. The second layer of the bird is yellow, pure yellow, Barb. So, if you just finish the background, what you do next is you go back to the bird. You make sure that you wipe off your brush. Make sure there's no blue in your brush. Okay? And then you go into some yellow. And you only do the yellow around the edge of the bird. Okay? All right. Now... I'm not going to worry about my background or my dirt yet. I think I'm going to go back into my bird. And I realize it still may be wet, and that's okay too. So this time, though, I'm going to take some orange. So for all you people who haven't done your orange yet on your legs, just stay with me. So I've got some orange, and this time I'm going to, I'm going to show you this on this Look at where I have my orange. It's at the bottom of everything is orange. It's darker. I left this part alone on the top. So don't do anything on the top. This is just the bottom. So I'm coming in. Now, some of you might go, oh my gosh, that was just too much. Way too much. Ah, I've just ruined this. I've just ruined it. No, 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 no. Never fail. So do you see how that line is really, really bold right there? Well, I don't like that. So how do you think I fix that? And everyone goes, oh, I don't know. So you get some water on your brush. Just clean water. You come over here next to it and you put it on it. And you lift it up. Y'all see how that's blending 
this kind of goes back to that tornado part, right? When we were teaching us about tornadoes. Look at that. That's fantastic. He's got a little round belly. Ah, Barb's chiming in. You've been in my class too much, Barb. You know exactly what I want. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to come down and because I've done that and I added water, I'm actually going to come down back to, I got to make these legs a little bit more orange and I got to make the top of this beak just a little bit more orange. All right. Looking good. Are we looking good? Everybody seeing good stuff? Now, here you go. I'm going to continue to add. I'm actually going to go to red. And if you're scared of red, this is what I suggest that you do. And you can always watch the replay on this if I'm going too fast, which I know I probably am. But I got to get this done. We got 15 minutes to fix this baby. I take some red on my brush and I put it on my palette. How do we make a color lighter? We add water, the same thing. So I'm gonna come in and get some water and I'm adding to this red. I'm gonna wipe it off, I'm gonna get some more water and I'm gonna do this. Now, you can have a whole lot of water on your brush here and that might be bad. So I first wipe off my brush on my paper towel. Then I come in with my homemade light color of red and I'm coming in and I'm just adding a little bit to this. You see how it's blending with my orange and you know what else? I like that color a lot actually. I'm just doing it in certain places. Now that I just did a full on red blob. How many of y'all are freaking out about that? That's okay. Look at that. I just added some water and I added to it. And if y'all notice, one, it's going to actually be lighter than when it dries. So w be careful with that, right? Like know that, oh, I'm scared to death of this, but really and truly it's going to be okay because. Now, remember we needed to add hair to this. So, do we remember how to do our little sunburst, our hairs? So, I'm coming here and I'm going to do it around the bottom half of this. You don't have to do a whole lot. I'm doing it where I have orange. Okay, I'm not doing it where I have a whole lot of yellow yet. Because I probably want to do that in yellow. And it's kind of all over the place. He's kind of hairy, right? I'm even doing it kind of in there. All right. Oh, he's already looking a little fuzzy. That's cute. Okay, I'm going to go back into the yellow. I'm going to add yellow hair to the top part too. So I'm going straight yellow. I actually did put it over here on the thing just so I could control it a little bit better. Adding it. You want to be careful if you have your background really close to this. If the background is wet, you could have a mess. So you want to make sure that it's kind of dry. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but on mine, remember where that circle was? That is like the meat of the actual chicken. It makes it round. So that's why my paint is going around that circle right there. So I erased that, but I still can see it a little bit. So I, that's why this orange line is happening right here. And I like that. So I'm gonna actually go back in and add some more. Now, remember I told you I wanted to use some of that gold color? I think I'm gonna try it right now. And I think I'm gonna do it 
down here at the bottom. Maybe right here. Oh, he's cute. Look how cute he is. Now, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to go back to the background. Because this is getting really wet on me, the bottom half. And so I need that to actually settle down before I actually do any more. And I realize that you all are still working. But I need to like finish this up so we can so you can see the final project. So I'm actually going to make this black again. I'm going to make it because it needs to be a little bit brighter. So I've got a little bit of a black dot. Because it only had one layer on it, right? So I've added that. I think I'm going to make this dirt a little bit darker. So I'm going to go in with my darker brown. And you see how I'm only adding just a little bit to it. Because I want to see that other side, that other color too, in it. It also would need a shadow. Because the chicken is hovering there, right? So there would be a shadow underneath him. Oh, I hope you're also so cute. I can't wait to see them. You all must. So what I think I wanted you to do is if you, you can direct message me them. Or you can, at the bottom of this um, post, when you see it, not in Instagram, but in um, Facebook, you could post your picture of this. I'm going to come back with some blue. And you see how I'm kind of messy with it, right? Well, it adds movement. Remember we said that. You see how I didn't add too much hair, too, right? Okay, I'm liking that. Anybody else liking your bird? Um, let's see. You don't want to overdo your bird. And you see how that line, that line's bothering me. So that's, that line right there on the top of the head there is kind of heavy. So I'm coming in and I am going to take some water and I'm moving the water down. Just like that. I'm taking it down in that those places too. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm being picky now. I'm going to add another big I want this to be a little darker. So I'm adding a little bit more orange. Okay. I think I'm pretty close to being done. How are we doing? Anybody got any questions? Because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to dry mine real quick. And then I'm going to show you how to do... Well, then I'm going to do my little black outline. I got to find my dryer. Where did it go? Uh-oh. This is what happens when your teacher is not prepared. All right. So this is a little heat gun. It's called a heat it tool. You can buy it on Amazon. Uh, Michael sometimes have it, but it's really quiet. But it's really, really hot. So I wouldn't recommend it for children. But, this was already pretty dry before I even got started with doing this. But, so it, it's working pretty well. But, you'll see, oh, you'll see how those layers look right here. Oh, look how pretty that is. Right there. Oh, that's yummy. Okay, I'm going to do my little black outline. While I'm doing this, if you all have any questions... Now's your chance. Speak up or forever hold your peace. That's not true. So you know when I am sketching and I'm actually doing this little outline that it's sketchy. It's not perfect. There's a couple reasons I do that, right? One, you can't mess up if it's not perfect. It's like you're doing it on purpose. That's fantastic. Now, I'm adding little scribbles down here at the bottom to make it look like it's an actual shadow. Okay, the other thing is, I'm going to start with this eye. 
One of the things about chicken eyes is that they always have an outline underneath it. So that's one reason and I'm kind of drawing in that area. And now for the hair. You don't have to draw every single one of those hairs people. This is not a perfect painting. So I'm coming in and I'm just scribbling. One of the reasons I like to do this black outline, some people would say that this makes it flat and whatever, but I kind of liked the, I like the detail that it kind of adds. It also, to me, kind of makes it more whole, especially since we're doing like little sketches. We're not doing a whole chicken and this isn't like the most perfect work ever, right? So, and well, it's my type of art, honestly. Yours might look different, and that's okay. Ah, oh, he's so cute! Make sure you sign your work. And if y'all haven't started, you could start dating it so you knew that, hey, this is, <laughs> this is my coronavirus art. <laughs> okay, guys. Let me know if you have questions. Barb says, what if we used a really tiny brush and some black watercolor for some of the things that you're doing instead of a pen? Yes, you can, Barb, but make sure when you do that, your chicken is completely dry. Completely dry. And you need to make sure that you probably don't have a whole lot of water on your brush too. Otherwise, it's going to look... Um, it's going to bleed. Now, I can do that. I can show you that. So, I have that little baby brush. Y'all see that? And I'm going to get some water on my little black right here. And I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to do a little... But do you see how even I had... It's a light touch barb. And... It still works, though. Anybody else got any great questions? That was an excellent question. I'm going to now add it. Now you've got me playing, Barb. Look at that, man. See, that added a nice little um, shadow to it. I kind of like that. All right, guys. Now, I want you to know that tomorrow... We have our Mr. Peter Cottontail that we're going to do. All right. Two o'clock Central Standard Time. And we are also, I wanted to let you know that it, we have, I said that I'd say this again. I have this watercolor class coming up. It is a paid Zoom class. It is Monday and Tuesday at noon. So if you're interested just reach out to me, give me a comment, give me a direct message, and I'll send you the link. And it's $25, but we are doing hydrangeas. Um, it does say that experience is necessary, but that doesn't mean that you have to have experience. If you've had one of these classes, I think you could probably do this. I just didn't want people that were like completely, I don't know anything about watercolor, okay? Because it's only two, it's only two classes, so it's Monday and Tuesday. All right, guys, Instagram's about to cut me off. I have, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, tomorrow we'll be doing Mr. Peter Cottontail. Okay? Have a great rest of the day. And I will see you all later. I would love to see your work, so make sure you post it, okay? Post it. Let me see it. These are going to be cute. I just know it. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks, Vanessa. Thanks, Barb. You all have a great day. All right. Instagram has been saved. And you Facebook people, see you later. And Barb, don't be afraid of the pen. Just do it. <laughs> Bye.